Namaste. Namaste. Welcome to day 18, the day of perfect timing. Let's take a deep breath. And a deep breath. When I tuned into the concept of perfect timing today, I sensed a deeper relaxation within myself. The relaxation came from a feeling that there is a greater wisdom than myself that allows things to be in their own perfect time. Let's just uh, consider perfect timing. We're sitting here in our room. Do we feel like we're in the right place at the right time right now? Is there somewhere else we'd rather be? Something we have to do that requires our attention? Or is this moment enough? Perfect timing is a very key part of being a musician. There's something magical about perfect time and it has nothing to do with technicality, has nothing to do with virtuosity of the instrument that the musician is playing. In my world, we call perfect time in being in the zone, being in the groove. It's a very mysterious phenomenon because it's something that you cannot predict, that you cannot force. And yet it descends upon the music and the musicians in such a way that it's totally recognizable and absolutely harmonious. It creates a deep relaxation in the musicians and a deep relaxation to the people who hear the music. Whenever I come across parents and children, I always encourage the parents to make sure that the child has a drum. I know it creates a little bit of noise in the house, but it's very important that a child grows up with a natural rhythm. We all have that potential, but sometimes it's dormant. And once we can recognize in ourselves a sense of natural rhythm, we feel more relaxed with life, more grounded in ourselves, more aware of the moment. And this is a result of what we call perfect timing. This mantra assists us to move into this mysterious and beautiful world called the zone. <laughs> Let's see if we can move into the groove together where we chant this mantra in a flow, just like a river that moves gently or swiftly towards the ocean in perfect tempo, in perfect harmony with itself and with everything around. This is perfect timing. The mantra is Om Kala Vide Namaha. Om Kala. Kala means time. Om Kala. Vide, vide means the knower. Namaha. So I bow to the knower of time. I bow to the God of perfect timing. The way we recorded it is that we interspersed the 108 repetitions with a mantra OM, extended as a symbol of sometimes it's time to be in a flow and sometimes it's time to pause so that we remain flexible. And this flexibility, of course, helps us to deal with issues and situations in life. The more relaxed, the more harmonious, the more rhythmical we are, the easier it is to glide through life in synchronicity with everything around us. Just to remind ourselves of the significance of 108 repetitions. 
according to the ancient holy scriptures of India, the Vedas, our body has 108 main energy lines called the nadis. And when we repeat a mantra 108 times, we fill out these 108 nadis with the energy of the mantra. The word nadi has the word nad in it, and nad means sound in Sanskrit. So these energy lines are actually sound carriers of the sacred sound current. Energy is sound, life force is sound. So we are immersing our whole body in that sound current of the particular mantra. So let's sit with our back straight and take a moment to tune into perfect time. Being here now is perfect timing.
Take a deep breath. And today, let's tune into time and see where existence shows us a wiser plan than we could have had, where existence points us with little synchronicities to the trust that everything is happening in its perfect timing. Have a beautiful day. Namaste. Namaste. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, Shanti.